Utopian Duelist here, and today I have for you a wonderful, 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 wonderful decklist video. Oh crap, I forgot a wonderful. Um, uh, wonderful? <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> it's the worst intro I've done in a long time, guys. Anyway, um, today I have for you my Odd Eyes Draco Pal build. Yeah. Um,. Keep in mind, I am two weeks weeks away from regionals, guys. So there is a uh, there will definitely probably probably definitely kind of probably not. No, yeah, I don't care anymore. <laughs> there will probably be a few little changes to made to the deck, just little ones. And if I know about what I think I'm going to change already, I'll try to let you guys know during the uh, video. But we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it, and I'll kind of uh, talk about it as I go. You know, you is, you is know the drill. Alright, so first card we have, we have a luster on my... I'm doing this on one of my coffee tables, and it's it's a stone coffee table. And it's kind of... Anyway. It's kind of lopsided. Anyway, I've said anyway eight times. Anyway, lol. Uh, we have Luster. Luster is a great card in the deck. It allows you to bring out Ignister, and Ignister can be used to do some major plays. It can be used to clear your opponent's board. It can be used to screw up their plays altogether. It can be used for a lot of things. It can actually be used in the mirror match pretty well, considering you can target their pendulum scale, destroy it, and then shuffle back the other one, and they are completely out of scale. So unless they have the replacement scale in their hand or a way to get it, they're pretty much screwed. And only re the really good Draco Pal players know that you should keep hand present, a uh, decent hand presence at all times. I don't even do that sometimes, and I've been playing the deck for a pr lo long time, long time. Um, news, by the way, Utopias will be coming back. Um, somebody won with an Ignite build. Um, with an Ignite build for Utopia, somebody topped 13th at the Kansas Regional. So, that is definitely something I would like to try, is the Ignite build. I'll probably do my own little thing with um, the Perform Pals and stuff in it, but yeah. It, it was half, like, it had some of the Dark uh, Draco Pal engine in it, and, like, it had Zephyros the Elite and some of that kind of stuff. But anyway, next we have Master. Master's card, one of the main cards in the deck. It can help you set up a lot of plays if you're good if you know what you're doing, you can also use this to pop one and add another one to your hand if somehow this ends up in your scale. Uh, and sometimes it's a good thing for it to end up in your scale. If, I mean, you don't always have to use it to make it nister. But anyway, it's also great for making this with any other pendulum monster you control, just because, you know, screw Dark Hole, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, then we have my little Overlord engine. See, I know a lot of people that I've seen have been playing um, two vector and maybe one lector. I, I just like to play one vector, one lector. That's all I really ever seem to need or run into. Plus, lector's great in the mirror match, lector vector. Um, that's how Ryan used to beat me a lot when he ran Draco Pals and we'd go mirror match. Is um, he would run put lector in his deck? He had lector in already, <clears throat> but he'd sign in another one. And he usually ran into it off the search or anything, and he'd leave it in the scale. He would not do anything. He would leave it in the scale, and I could not do crap. It was so annoying. So you got to know how to play around the 5 scale. Um, most of your monsters should be level 4s, though. So anyway. Then we have the Odd Eyes engine. I, I play 3 unicorns. Uh, I think 3 is a good number. It can be used for a couple of combos. Um, like you can target one, one power monster you control, and then... One Odd Eyes monster, the Odd Eyes monster gains attack equal to the Perform Pal monster. So that's why I run a one copy of Odd Eyes just to get that. Uh, let's see here. If I wanted to target my uh, some gnat on my mat, ha ha ha, rhymes. If I wanted to target this and then this, uh, my Odd Eyes would gain um, 2,000, so it would be at uh, 45 for a turn. Plus, any battle damage it does is doubled, and then this would still be able to attack, and I can still actually tribute it to target a perform pal. So you can actually get a lot of um, attack point boost off this little odd eyes thing. But uh, anyway, so I run the one Phoenix and the one odd eyes to go along with that. 
Uh, I feel it works really well. I don't ever seem to dead draw the odd eyes at all. Um, it all I pretty much always run into it when I need it or when I search it. In fact, most of the time I do end up having to search it, although it's not a bad thing having to search it. Most of the time it's just, and, and most of the time it's just for that extra target, you know? Anyway, then we hit the performer pal engine. We have my, uh, three first dead sorcerers. Happy, happy days. Beautiful cards. Yeah. God. Guys, the reprint for this card is so freaking ugly. Like, I'm, I'm literally getting up right now to get my binder just to show you guys this. Where is my reprints? Because I bought two tins so far. I did an opening video for that. Go check that down. It won't be down in the description because I need to remember to put things down in my description, but, uh, anyway, look at the difference in this, guys. Look at the se secrets all pretty and stuff. Look, this is the ugliest super I've ever seen in my life. Why would they reprint this on a super? Print it in a secret. Lord. Or maybe an ulti. An ulti might look pretty cool. Ulti might look pretty, pretty cool. But anyway. So there's those. Then we hit the one, uh, Skullcrabat Joker, considering that's all we can play. And then, uh, then we hit Monkey Board. No, I'm sorry, guys. Rip Monkey Board. I miss Monkey, Mo Monkey Board very much. And actually, for the build I used with the Ignites, I need the, I would need the level 6, so Monkey Board would be freaking great for me to have right now. And we do band tournaments around clubs sometimes, and I'm actually, we're doing one of those Saturday. I may record a couple matches for Keandre. He's the one who's running the tournament, because he wants to get some publicity to the club and stuff like that. So I may record a couple matches for them, and I may... Um, Next time we do it, uh, if they allow pendulums, he's not allowing pendulums since he doesn't really know a lot about the mechanic yet, just because he stopped playing for a little while. I think he went to the National Guard for a little while, but um, I've known Keandre for a few years. He's pretty, 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 my freaking tongue just tied in 20 knots. And, and there it goes again. Anyway, so he's he's pretty, pretty cool guy. Anyway, then we have my little uh, Perform Pal Draw Engine. I like Guitartle. One thing I do is pretty much my first pop with Sorcerer is either going to go into a high scale and then something else, like Unicorn and something else, or it's going to go straight into these two cards just to help stack my hand and continue my plays or just keep some stuff in my hand for later on in the later game, you know? Um, or just have that chance of pulling on his Fusion or Regeki just to get overboard and stuff like that. Anyway, and then I play three Silver Claw. I know, I know. You're not supposed to even, really even... I mean, some people play Silver Claw, but not a lot. Yeah. But I'm playing three. I like it because if you get all three of these out on the board, for me, I better do this during your, your guys' direction. So when this one attacks, they all gain a th uh, 100. So this will attack with 21. These two are at 21. When this one attacks, it'll be attacking with 24. This is at 24. When this one attacks, it'll be attacking with... Um, shoot. 25, 6, 7, yeah, 7. Sorry, my math doesn't work. My brain doesn't work with math. So this will be attacking with 27. That's borderline game right there if it's already not. So 21, 24, and 27, that's 60. That's really close to game. That's really, really close to game. But anyway. So that's my 4 pal engine. Now we hit all the, like, rogue little... Pendulums like uh, the first one, Magical Abductor. Oh, ho, ho. OMG. OMG, it's Magical Abductor. I honestly, unless I have Terraforming, I don't find myself using Magical Abductor a lot. I may take it down one to put something else in, running it too. Because I never really find myself using the effects. I don't really, I, I run six spells in the deck, plus my um, all my Pendulum scales, of course. But I never find myself really using the effect. I don't lose a lot of duels with this deck either, so... It's not its not that I'm a bad player. Which is basically what Ryan would say if he was listening right now. You're, you're bad. You're just a bad player. Well, shut up, you scrub. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> I play two Guiding Aradne. Aradne, it's a good card. I only run four counter traps in the deck right now. I may bump it up to five, but I really honestly don't think I will. It's all I really ever feel that I need, and that's really all that I ever go into, because normally the duel's over before I need it, or I've already drawn them or something like that. 
Um, although it's a pretty good low scale, it's got a good effect. Um, so yeah. And um, then we have Archfiend Accent. X. I almost said Accentric for some reason. Eccentric. Um, good little high scale. It's a good little high scale. It can be used to tribute. You can tribute this card and pop a monster in your opponent's field. So it's good for clearing board. And it can also get rid of vanities or skill drain or something like that. Because if you put it in your payload scale, you can uh, destroy it and then target one point, uh, spell or trap card in your opponent controls and destroy that. So it's good for getting a lot of those problematic cards out. It's even good for... Um, wow, my brain just died right there. I almost said it's even good for anti-spell. Ignore that, guys. Anyway, then we have... This is actually my out for blue eyes at, right here. It's because a lot of people don't know this. Um, Sam was actually telling me this, uh, Sam Cox Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, I think he's been in a couple of my videos, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually going to a, up to a locals and probably hang out with him for a little while and do some duels, win some matches, hopefully I'll win, lo hopefully I'll win the locals, although Ryan's going up there probably, so I will probably, probably, probably end up in like second or third place just because Sawyer and Ryan are there, and then Sam's usually, um, either gives it to somebody who can't play very well or something like that, or he, he, he just goes ham and ends up in the finals. Sam's, Sam's a pretty good player. I was actually looking at a couple deck lists from the um, Kansas Regional. He went up there, and I saw him in the background of a couple of them. Just, like, waving his arms or something. I don't, I don't even know. I can't remember what he was doing, but I know it made me laugh. Anyway, so this card, after getting sidetracked for 10 minutes, guys, sorry. Um, when this card crashes in... Or when this card, sorry, when this card attacks a monster that is not a Pelham card, it's destroyed before damage calculation. So basically, this is how you, um, well, it'd be this way for you guys. This is how you get over a lot of cards, and it's even good if you want to normal summon this card. And golly, what is it? The card that keeps you, that Blue Eyes runs, that keeps you from, um, some special summoning more than two monsters at once. Um, it's the Synchro Monster, anyway. Uh, it's pretty much what every Blue Eyes player is going to bring out against you if you're a Draco Pal player or a Pendulum player. It's pretty much just predictable. And they're just going to leave it in defense, and then they're going to switch it to a Zero Eyes. The Zero Eyes protect their dragons. and Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. But anyway, you can crash into the, in with this, and it'll be destroyed before damage calculation. So it's really good for getting rid of back um, um, problem monsters and stuff like that. And um, it's a three scale, so in emergencies. <clears throat> and then you have your one Kirin, sadly. I'm, I miss Kirin and Monkey Board. I want to run more Kirins and more Monkey Boards. I'm so sad about that. Anyway. So now we have my spells, which is... We run the one Autodesk Fusion. Great card. I This is the original print, and I have the original print in Vortex as well, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. We have my Gold Lace, uh, Draco Face Off. Did Draco Face Off come at Face Off come in a Super? I, d I don't know if I did or not, actually. Anyway. That's not right. Uh, we play one Regeki. Regeki might end up being a Vanities just to deal with special summon decks like Blue Eyes. Because what you do, you do all your crap, you set it, then on their draw phase you can chain activate it. So, yeah. And then you run your little uh, Sky Iris engine for the auto stuff. Um, which essentially gives you three. Plus this is double counter for... Um, Wow, Magical Abductor, my brain died. My brain died a long time ago, guys. Anyway, so this is double counter from uh, Magical Abductor. Plus, this is essentially three. Plus, if you want to side in a Necro Valley, you can side in a Necro Valley for one of the Sky Irises. And essentially, with the terraforming, you get. You basically have two Sky Iris and then the two Necro Valley. So it, 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 works, it works pretty balanced. So you can, if you get terraforming, you can bring out either one you want. And then whatever you draw into, of course. And then, guys, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I do not have strikes yet. They're kind of a pain in the butt to pick up, even though they got reprinted. Or at least they are for me, just because I need to get the monies. But I'll, I'll have them before regionals, for sure, guys. But anyway, I run a Solemn Strike. Wow, I'm stupid. I run a Solemn Warning. And then we have the one Ultimate Providence. I'm going to say this now. Ultimate Providence is a good, good counter trap. But if you don't have the card to detat, or I'm sorry, the card to discard for it, and you don't have a rod down the field, it can be really annoying. 
So it's it's kind of situational. This, honest to God, guys, because PK Fire and Blue Eyes are running around, running rampant as my dog kicks my tripod. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, are running rampant right now. This could end up being a chaos trap hole. In fact, I'm going to talk that over with Sawyer. I usually run, try to run things by him, Malcolm, or Ryan first just to get a second opinion. Or maybe all three of them, maybe two of them. I just like to get the opinions the most popular boat. And sometimes I'll just go rogue and do it myself. It depends. But anyway, that could be a Chaos Trap Hole, and then I run two strikes. I know I probably should be running three strikes of Warning, and then a Chaos Trap Hole, and then maybe an Ultimate Providence, or something like that. But it's, yeah, I just like running four, because I run the two Rodneys, and I don't like to draw on the traps a lot, because they can brick. But right now, if you do see me run Grand Horn in this deck... Uh, and during my dual videos, guys, if you watch me frequently, these are Grand Horns back here. Because um, some people don't like it when I side, and I don't really like to side. I'm sorry, proxy. Some people don't like it when I proxy, and I don't really like to proxy for my videos either. So sometimes I will flip those over to Grand Horns, but since they're gold lace, they float to the top and they brick me every time, and I fudging hate it. It's stupid. Anyway, now we're on to the uh, side deck cards. Little forewarning, some of these are in blue sleeves. I'm running my Utopias at the band tournament because pendulums aren't allowed, so some of my things like lightning, I've got double sleeved in black. That way I know what's out of my, um, wow, out of my Draco Pals, but I also know that when I use it in there, they're all the same sleeve because the rest of the extra deck for the Utopias is blue right now. But it's got a bunch of band cards like Pot of Green and stuff in there, so. Anyway, we have the one Ignister, and then the two Dynaster. Uh, here's your little, this is your little engine right here, and then it's usually for this. And I need to get a number 46 for the Blue Eyes matchup, because you can side that out for their, um, or you can side this out for 46, and you can take control of one of their monsters. So it, it's pretty, pretty cool. Anyway, then we run the one, uh, Oz Vortex Dragon, great card, great card, got me out of a few situations, and it's annoyed the crap out of a few people. Um... Moth just landed on my hand. We run the 138. Uh, Hope. I gotta read the name, guys. Just for shits and giggles. Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. Yay. Yay. Anyway. We run in this deck. I, I know my old Draco Pals didn't, but I like it better now just because it's good for getting rid of, rid of problem cards. And in my PK Fire or PK Trains versus Auto's Draco Pal video that I did, which is the video right before this on the uploads. It actually helped me get over his um, Doras, so it helps out a lot. Then we have my Gold Lace and my Japanese Gold Lace. This will come out for regionals, guys. It's just in there for fun right now. It's like, I'm pretty sure Sam runs Japanese polymerizations for his fluffles. But, I, mean, I may be wrong. Anyway. So, and then we go into a Dark Rebellion. So, these three, car, these three cards, excluding the Utopias, these three cards right here are basically the beaters of the deck. And... This is to get rid of problem cards. I don't like going to XEs a lot, just because you lose your um, pendulum cards that way. But if you got enough built up, it's it's okay to do it. Or if you just absolutely know if you get rid of something. Yeah, but you don't want to go first turn into a freaking lightning. Because that thing is going to get destroyed somehow. Somebody's going to play Regeki, Dark Hole, um, something else that I probably can't think of. Anyway, I run one um, Magister. Kieran, or Magister, wow, I'm going to say Kieran. Uh, I run one uh, Magister Paladin, the Ascending Draco Slayer. I, I really don't ever, I never even use Magister Paladin. I never even feel the need. Like, the deck's really consistent. I can pretty much get anything off I want. Now, if I just have the extra rank fours there and my extra deck stacked up with Pendle Monsters, yeah, I'll go ahead and summon it just to get the extra, let's say, luster, just add that to my hand just to get some stuff off. I mean, that's cool and everything. I'll do that, but anyway. Uh, to get Amaral, basically this is to get back either a set of lightning, uh, Utopia and lightning, or if someone, let's say, freaking Solemn Strike to my Utopia before I went into lightning, that I can get the both lightnings out of the graveyard in a Utopia, or I can get my Nister back, or I can get my Dynalster back if I want to, and then hashtag cowboy for game, yay. And then I'm going to, I just dropped my entire extra deck all over the floor, that's, that's, that's amazing, guys. That is the best thing I've done all day long. Aren't I so cool? I am the best duelist in the world. OMG. Oh, yeah. Look at that level of swag right there. Swag. I got lightnings for days. I got the Japanese Utopia. 
I'm better than all you scrubs. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so I'm going to run through my side deck real fast. Um, I have this in for filler right now. I don't have a lot of side deck cards stacked up yet, so we're supposed to be helping me with that. So yip de dip de dee um, So this is just in there in case somebody decides to run Monarchs for some reason. Uh, Vanity's Emptiness, which will probably go main, might go main deck for the Regeki. I've told you that already. I run a Mind Crush just because why not? Uh, it's filler again, and I guess you could side it against Blue Eyes, because when they search the alternative, you can Mind Crush the alternative, so I guess that works. Stargain Dyers keeps, uh, lowers all my opponent's monsters by one, so this kind of kills my mirror match, unless they have a rank three in there for some reason, which most Draco players, Draco Pal players don't. They might have a Nightmare Shark, but they probably won't go into it. Uh, a mistake. I know that hurts my deck, but I don't necessarily have to add. I can just work off draw. If it kills my opponent as well as it kills me, it's basically whoever has the greatest hand, like the best hands. It, it's all situational, guys. Uh, Soul Drain. Soul Drain's... <laughs> yeah, this kills PK Fire right here, because if you guys don't know what this does, um, activate by paying a thousand life points, so it's just like Skill Drain, except it negates, um, monster effects in the graveyard, and, let's see here. Monsters that are banished as well as monsters in the graveyard cannot activate their effects, so that, and it starts the chain, so, it, it kills, it kills, it kills PK Fire. Um, a system down in there just in case somebody runs Cosmos for some reason. Or maybe a Cyber Dragon deck or something like that. And there was another deck that was Machine that did something, but I don't remember. Um, anyway, Leeching the Light. This is lols for days again. If you guys don't know about this, this is lols for days against Blue Eyes. Because Leeching the Light, you play it, target your, one of your opponent's light monsters. And all your monsters gain attack equal to that target. So, you, let's say I have Odd Eyes, Pendulum Dragon on the field. I target my opponent's blue eyes. It's going to gain 3,000 attack. So, that'll be 5,500 attack. All my monsters will gain that 3k. So, if I have a full board, board like, yeah. If I have a full board of um, Pendulum Monsters, I can get over pretty much anything they got. I run the one Necro, Necro Valley, Necro Valley, Acro Valley, I don't care. Uh, and an Intercept Wave. Um, it's kind of like a multi compulse, I guess. It sends all uh, all synchro monsters your opponent can, uh, all synchro monsters in the field actually are changed to defense position, and then during the end phase, return all synchro monsters from the field to the extra deck. Then for the machine slash mostly blue eyes matchup, um, electric virus ditch it to um, take control of a dragon type or machine type monster your opponent controls. I run the one flying C just to kind of. You know, screw over, um, what is it called? Blue Eyes? Yeah. And it does, it does actually. It, it It's kind of annoying for them, unless they tr want to tribute. So, yeah. Then Santa Claus, just to get rid of problem monsters. Plus, um, you get the draw off it, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Then I run the One Abyss Dweller. And for those scrubs out there that have a lightning like me, suck it, I got 98. And you guys don't know what this card does. It was released in the Dragons of Legend Pack 2, or whatever it's called. Freaking Moth again. Keeps coming over here, and I don't like him. Um, if this card's in your graveyard, you can target one uh, Utopia monster on the field. You can take control of it, or you can take it as an overlay unit. It's not being used. I know Lightning says it cannot be used as an overlay unit, but if you take it as an overlay unit, that does not count. So you can take their Lightning. That's how you kill Lightnings with 98. So that's uh, great, great, happy, happy days, guys. Um... Much love, guys. Uh, I've I got a couple videos that are... Uh, I've got a video that's at 2K views right now. Um, and I'm 111 subscribers, so thank you guys so much for that. You guys are wicked, cool, awesome peoples and stuffs and things. Um, guys, like, subscribe. You know the rest, guys. See ya.